entertainment, sports, news, and opinion. Now, here is Steve Malsberg. You know, part of the reason I was so adamant about including women and girls in our foreign policy, not as a luxury, but as a central issue, is because they're often the canaries in the mine. You watch women and girls being deprived of their rights. Some of them never have them. Some of them lose them. And among those rights is control over their bodies, control over their own health care, control over the size of their families. And it is a disturbing trend that you see in a lot of societies that are very unstable, anti-democratic, and frankly, uh, prone to extremism. Really? So this is what's happening now, according to Hillary Rodham Clinton, who, by the way, uh, Business Insider says that Bill and Hillary, and God bless them for doing this, but I just want to educate you, uh, made over $160 million dollars since leaving the White House. Sounds broke to me. Uh, anyway, yeah, now we're one of these societies that uh, deny women their rights because, because uh, a company won't pay for one of uh, four abortion pills. I mean, this, uh, boy, the, the Republicans better have a fireback answer for this and the, and the Republican presidential candidate better have a fireback answer for this or they're doomed. Joining us now on the Malsberg panel is Lignet senior analyst Lisa Ruth and founder of Less Government, Seton Motley. Welcome to both of you. Let's start with you, Lisa. And um, you've, heard, you've heard the left. You've heard the hysteria on the part of the left in the wake of the, uh, uh, the Supreme Court ruling yesterday. Um, what do you make of it? Uh, well, I, I certainly think it's uh, giving a lot of fodder to a lot of conversation. And I think really the, the interesting thing is going to be how we move forward and the talk now about whether the White House is going to try to use executive privilege to get some of this stuff through or whether they're actually going to follow what the Supreme Court ruling is. That's going to be the next next issue at hand. Uh, Seton? Well, I, I, I like to think that we have enough women in America who can tell the difference between the government forcing their employer to buy them abortion pills and birth control. I, ho I hope there's a delineation that can be made there for a majority of women in America. But I think the next step for the Obama administration is to just have the government pick up the tab for these uh, abortion pills. And then my question becomes, isn't that a violation of the Hyde Amendment, which prevents federal government money from actually specifically going to abortion or abortion type uh, procedures? Right, and plus you're forcing you and me and, and that's, Lisa that's, to pay for that abortion. And there's a, there's a Hyde Amendment for that specifically. Um, right, yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, let's, let's talk, uh, 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 Lisa, about, uh, uh, you know, you talk about how the Obama administration will proceed. And yesterday, of course, he wasted no time in the wake of this uh, defeat that said that uh, they, uh, they overstepped their constitutional bounds on the Affordable Care Act. There he was saying, my attorney general and the uh, 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 Homeland Security secretary will inform me how far I could go on my own on immigration reform, and I'm going to do it. Um, so, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's, he hasn't missed a beat. No, he certainly has not. And, you know, again, from the point of view of looking at, at separation of powers and how things are supposed to work, this is very much outside of that. However, I, I think that what we're really setting up moving forward is that between now and the end of the term there is really not going to be any any consensus there's not going to be any working together you're going to have one side against the other it's going to be very difficult to get things passed it's going to be very acrimonious and 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 seaton i mean he's not uh he's, he's not backing down he's uh more more strident than ever and uh, to hold that press conference yesterday just hours after being shot down again this time five four but if you go back to 012, there have been nine Supreme Court rulings, I'm sorry, 13 Supreme Court rulings, nine to nothing, that have shot down this administration and this president in, in their rulings. He, he doesn't care about any of this. His, his only objective is to grow government as much as possible uh, during his eight years. Um, if he's going to do anything on him if he was at all interested in actually coming together with the republicans on this 
he doesn't need any new law. He doesn't need any new executive orders. He can enforce the laws that exist currently as a demonstration of good faith towards any future uh, negotiations. He's not doing that. The law currently requires him to enforce the border. He's not doing that. So anything going forward is a is a exercise in folly if anyone's pretending that he's interested in any kind of negotiation uh, negotiated settlement with the Republicans. All right, uh, Lisa, let me ask you about uh, the uh, horrific situation in uh, Israel. Yesterday, Israel uh, found uh, those three teenagers, one a, a dual citizen, American and Israeli. Uh, they've been buried today, uh, according to Jewish law. And uh, the president yesterday not only said that uh, he urges a restraint uh, from all parties, not to inflame the situation and make it worse, which is aimed at Israel, of course, but he also said that from the very beginning, he's offered the help of the United States to both Israel and the Palestinian Authority to bring to justice those who did this. So what dream world is he living in? Uh, well, you know, taking the, the whole statement, it's kind of ridiculous looking at where we are right now. I do think the issue when you're looking at the situation, it has to be how things are going to proceed in terms of Israel and, and the Palestinian Authority and Hamas. Secur the Security Council in Israel is meeting today. We're going to see some, some very interesting things coming out of this. The hawkish side absolutely wants to crack down on Hamas going in. We've seen airstrikes again today. The question is, what happens next? Will there be a backlash? Will we have uh, uh, reinvigorated Hamas based on this? And my guess actually is that Netanyahu's going to kind of take a middle road here. He's going to have airstrikes, but not going to clamp down nearly as hard as, as some of the conservatives would like in Israel. What about it, Seton? Well, you know, obviously it's a, it's a horrendous situation. And I, I, the solution to this long term is to let Israel be Israel. And you don't win wars until you win wars. <clears throat> and that you can't negotiate a settlement if one side is not interested in negotiating a settlement. So, uh, I, I, unfortunately, I think the only long term solution is for Israel to actually outright win over Hamas and the Palestinian Authority, who is now linked up with Hamas, and then you can settle terms in a way that will actually be acceptable to both sides. The fact that the yeah, world community I'll, keeps coming... I'll, Go ahead. I was going to say that I fear Lisa is on the right track. I think it's the wrong track, mm -hmm. but I think she's right that uh, Netanyahu will take some middle ground uh, when yeah. he could uh, just demolish Hamas. Uh, we'll come back, part two of the panel. Uh, if you'd like to weigh in, ladies and gentlemen, uh, through social media, here's how you might do it.